Hey guys, and welcome back. I'm Dave, aka The Costume Kid, and today we're going to be making a Miles Morales Spider-Man costume. Alright guys, so a little background here if you're new to my channel, I've made Spider-Man in the past. I've done multiple Spidey suits, including the Stark suit from Spider-Man Homecoming and the Iron Spider suit from Avengers Infinity War, both of which turned out awesome. You guys gave great feedback and they're to this day some of the most popular videos on my channel. So anytime I upload a new video, whether it be superhero or something else, all the requests are to make another Spidey suit, all kinds of Spidey suits. Maybe it's because I look a bit like Peter Parker, but nonetheless, I typically don't like repeating myself multiple times making the same costume unless there's something new. And in the new movie, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, there are all kinds of Spidey people, each with their own unique look and interesting costumes, so I'm really excited. And the one you guys really want to see and I'm really excited to make is Miles Morales' costume. He's the main character of the movie and his suit is pretty cool looking so I'm excited to tackle it. Now, spoiler alert here, if you haven't seen the movie yet, please do yourself a favor and go watch it. It's phenomenal. You're gonna love it. Uh, but then, come back here is... Okay, final spoiler warning. If you want to stay past one. Here we go. In the movie, we actually see how Miles makes his costume. It's a brilliant sequence that involves him taking Peter Parker's classic red and blue suit and spray painting over it to give it this cool black look. Now, coming from me, the guy who's attached many things, cardboard, hot glue, foam, duct tape, and yes, spray paint to costumes in the past. This is just really impractical. It looks cool, but if you spray paint an entire costume head to toe, it would just become really stiff and not nearly flexible enough for you to, you know, flip around, swing, fight, and do all those different Spider-Man things. So I'm gonna take some liberties with this one and make it the way I would do it, not quite the way Miles did it in the movie. So yeah. Now, as always, our first step is just the base clothes. Now, I've shown on my other Spider-Man videos how to make a suit out of just a red shirt and blue pants. That works really, really well, and it's a great DIY approach to it. But uh, I think it's time to try something new, uh, a little more advanced in this way. Uh, you might call it cheating in terms of a homemade costume, but I'm going to use a morph suit. Now, I've shied away from these in the past, mostly because I'd need two of them and they'd be pretty expensive to, you know, buy a red one and a blue one instead of just a shirt and pants. But since Miles' suit is all one color, black, I figured it's the perfect excuse to try it out. Now, here's the morph suit that I bought. Uh, this will work really, really nice to give the whole costume the same cohesive, you know, fabric look and sheen instead of just, you know, being a different black shirt and black pants. It wouldn't quite match right. But uh, now, we're ready to actually, you know, decorate it, paint it up, and make it into the Miles Morales Spider-Man costume. Now, I'm sure you're getting tired of these by now, but if you recall back to my last Spider-Man costume, to add the webbing on it, I tried out a new technique with puffy paint. Uh, here it is, tulip puffy paint. I had to get some more because I ran out of my previous costume, but it worked really, really well. It's flexible enough, it has not cracked, and I did all the webbing with it. It took forever, but it looked great. And so, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So I figured we could use this again on the new costume, and uh, it'll turn out great. But before we get to that, of course, Miles has some red still showing through from underneath, you know, the suit that he spray painted, right? On his shoulders there, a little bit on his fingers too. So to add that, I have some red puffy paint. I haven't actually used this in multiple colors yet, but uh, hopefully it shows up on the black fabric, and this will turn out good. To fill the shirt, of course, you can't just paint the lines on when it's flat, because then you'll go to put it on, it'll stretch oddly, and the whole thing will just look weird. So, I'm going to be using my duct tape dummy here. This is a mannequin replica of my exact body, my torso here. I have a video linked right here, if you want to go click and see how I made this. Turned out great. I used it on my previous costume, uh, Aquaman, where I had to glue all those scales on. Really came in handy, and uh, I'm going to use it again here. 
Now, you don't exactly need this, per se, because on my previous costume, I did just stuff the shirt with pillows to, you know, fill it to approximately the right dimensions, but, uh, I have this. This will work even better, so let's get started. Well, since this has a zipper, it'll be a lot easier to uh, put on and take off than uh, my Aquaman costume was. Ah! All right, guys, so what I'm worried about now is how well this red paint is actually going to show up on the black fabric. So, uh, well, let's see. Just start by squirting it out. Wow, that actually looks really, really great right now. I'm bring the camera over and do an HD close up. Now to smooth it out, I'm going to bring a little paintbrush action. I've never tried using a paintbrush on puffy paint before. I don't know if it's meant for this, but why not? The edge of it you can kind of dab in there because it's supposed to be spray painted, right? So. I just realized I'm kind of doing this in reverse, but if you want to take our red suit and paint the entire thing black, be my guest. Uh, good luck! Alright, so I didn't show you all of that, but it took many, many coats. I spent a lot of time waiting for it to dry, but I tried to keep them as thin and smooth as possible so that it didn't, you know, build up super thick with a ton of brush strokes and stuff. I think it turned out pretty good. No, it's not perfect, but what is, you know? So I'm ready to move on. Now, if you were doing the comic book Miles costume, you could just continue with this red paint for the rest of the webbing, and that would look great. But, of course, we are doing the animated movie version, and so for that, I'm going to be using this black puffy paint. Now, I know what a lot of you guys are thinking. You're like, wait, Dave, you're going to use black paint on a black shirt? What? Well, yes, and I have reasons to do that, because in the movie, yes, he spray paints over the entire costume, including the webbing, but it doesn't totally just disappear, it's still there, because it is kind of raised, like, physically, the webbing's there on the shirt, you know what I'm saying? And so, after it's covered, it still has kind of a different sheen and texture to it than the rest of the costume does, which I wanted to add. So I figure if I use this paint just for the webbing on the shirt, you'll still be able to see it after. It'll be the same color black, but because of the texture and the way it shines, I'll just show you guys instead of keep talking here. All right, so I just looked at the pictures and tried to draw it out as best as I could. Uh, since I've done this before, it really gets easier with every time I do it. But I guess I could explain the basic webbing pattern to you if you don't already know. It's just a bunch of vertical lines and then some arches, like little rainbows, connecting in between them all. It makes that iconic webbing texture and really looks cool. Now, I know it's pretty cold in my shop as I was doing this and uh, my hands were getting a little shaky. But I think it turned out okay and uh, I'm definitely happy with it. You know, something I really like about having it on a mannequin like this is when I'm done with a certain section of it, I can just flip it to the other side and do some more. You know what I'm saying? Um, my last one, when I just stuffed it with pillows, it took so much longer because I have to, you know, stuff it to the right position, do the front side, wait a while for it to dry completely, and then flip it over, do the other side, wait for it to dry, and then the arms took just a million sessions of painting because I. I had to do them all like that, but with a mannequin, get it all pretty much done in, in a couple sessions. And then I just continued with that same webbing pattern going across the back of the shirt. But uh, oh wow, that's really a great camera angle there, Dave. I can totally see what's going on, you know, behind the light. Wow. 
Oh, thanks, Autofocus. I'm really glad that my hair is the subject of the frame there, and uh, not the actual costume I'm trying to work on. Uh... Oh, now that's a good camera angle. It really shows the side of the costume that you're not working on. Oh, I'll just cut in some clips from my old video so you guys can get a sense of what it looks like when it's not black on black. And so I just continued with more painting down the arms there, but I'll take the second to mention something that I neglected to in the video, and that's this black puffy paint is actually like a special metallic black puffy paint. Uh, I know you can obviously see that, but when it was in the bottle, I didn't mention it for whatever reason because I didn't know how much it would show up as being metallic, but... As it's pretty obvious here, it's definitely more of a gunmetal, like a dark silver, but... I kind of dig it, you know, it definitely shows up better on the black shirt, so uh, yeah. Alright, so now that I've got most of the web lines on the shirt here done and dry, we are now ready to move on to the gloves. So Miles' gloves have the unique look of being black, but just with red fingers on them. It's a very cool design that I noticed they're even carrying over into the Spider-Man Far From Home movie this summer. And so my first original idea for this was to just use some more of that red fabric paint. I use it on the shoulders here and just cover the fingers in it, paint them up, and uh, they all look good. But this took a lot of coats, and it's still a relatively flat surface. Doing it on the intricate, you know, ins and outs of the fingers there, it'll just take way too long and probably not cover it and look as well as I like it to. So I've got a new idea here that comes in the form of these red Spidey gloves from my previous Spider-Man costumes. They're just red uh, with some lines over them. They actually have web shooters on the back. Pretty cool. But I figure if we, I think you can see where I'm going with this, if we cut the fingers off of the black gloves on here and then stick these through, might be able to work. No paint required. Kind of a, a sad <laughs> moment of truth here. When I cut the fingers off, it's pretty hard to add them back if you make a mistake, so be careful. And look at that. Red fingered spidey gloves. No added paint or uh, wasted time waiting for it to dry. Man, these look really, really awesome. Very happy with how they turned out. I have to crouch down on my table for you to see me in the video frame. But... Awesome. All right, so I even did the boots the same way, just with more puffy paint. And now I believe all the webbing, at least on the suit itself, is done. And there's just one more thing to complete this entire morph suit. I think you can guess it, it goes right in the center of his chest and on the back. That's of course the iconic spider logo. Now Miles has kind of a, a unique one. It's not the uh, printed spider logo that's you know always on his suit. It's once again spray painted, spray painted red onto the black over the red, I think. But once again, I'm going to be using the same red puffy paint. Just, you know, do it on the, he freehanded it, I mean, I'm sure, with the spray paint making the logo. So if it's a little messy, doesn't even matter. Uh, but I'll just look at the picture and do it on the front and on the back. Okay, so this is just the first coat here, don't worry, but are we totally going to gloss over the fact that Miles just spray painted a perfect circle onto this costume? Like what? Alrighty, and here I am with the full suit on. This is looking pretty cool. That red's really reflective in my light there. But uh, we got this logo here. Yes, I know it's too small and really messy, but Whatever, it's okay, man, it worked uh, for my size. And the back logo uh, kind of cuts through the zipper there, but still turned out pretty cool. And uh, there's another thing we still need to work on, of course, 
I don't look like Miles Morales yet. We need the mask, so let's do that now. Alright, so the next step in this costume, and probably the most iconic piece of any Spidey costume, is of course the mask. You can't be Spider-Man unless you have that iconic mask. Of course, with cool eyes, you know what I'm talking about. Now, I know some morph suits actually come with the mask, you know, attached, built in, but I opted to buy one that was separate just because in pretty much every Spider-Man version, uh, you can take it off so that it's, you know, the costume, but not the mask, right? But nonetheless, we've got this here. It's the same spandex material, just made into a mask, and, uh, well, fits my head uh, quite perfectly here, and uh, now we just need to detail it up. Of course, that's gonna include some webbing, going across it, and the eyes. I can actually see through this pretty well. And, uh, you know, I know what's going on. All right, so first things first, the eyes on the Spider-Man mask, they are ever so iconic, and they kind of look like this right here. On my Iron Spider costume, I made some pretty crazy eyes. Uh, they actually had LEDs built in so that you could turn them on, and they, they'd actually light up and glow blue, which is pretty cool, so this will be pretty easy comparatively. But basically, to make these pretty easily, we're going to be using some white see-through fabric here. Uh, this is so, at least if you layer it up a couple times, you guys can't see me, but I can still see through it fairly well. And so we'll use that for the eyes. And then to make a border on them, yes, the border is usually black right here, but since the mask is black, the border is actually red. So to make that, we're gonna just be using some red colored duct tape here. Uh, you can pretty much use whatever you want. If you got, you know, colored paper or some craft foam, if it's thin enough, whatever works. Okay, I just drew and cut out a little paper template there and then traced that down onto the duct tape. Uh, like I said, you could pretty much use any red material that you want, but the duct tape did end up giving a pretty cool glossy sheen that matched the same look as the red paint I have on the suit, so it ended up looking pretty nice. And then I doubled up two layers of the white fabric so that I could still see through it a little bit, but you couldn't see my eye there. And then I hot glued it to the duct tape. Well, actually here I wanted to flatten down the duct tape so it wouldn't be as raised up off the mask, but I didn't have anything within arm's reach and I already poured the glue. Oh no, cringe alert. Ooh, I used my hand. Yeah, not the best idea, kids. Be safe at home. Ow! <laughs> Worth it though, because it looks like this. Ooh, look at that. Once I peel it off my hand, of course. Ah. And then Miles' eyes also have a little blue line down the middle of the red border there, and uh, that's pretty much it to complete these pretty easy spider eyes. All right, so I cut out the area I need, you know, to glue the eyes on down and you can still see through. I know it looks like too much space, but I promise you, I did trace these down. It's, you know, when it's glued together, it'll kind of stretch it and shrink it to the right shape. At least hopefully. I mean, <laughs> that's plan. Uh, I don't know. All right, I am really, really happy with how these eyes turned out. And now there's just one more step to complete this mask. I think you can guess what it is, right? More puffy painted webs. Oh boy, I've been doing this same webbing pattern for hours. Puffy paint bottle. <laughs> Cosplay is fun. All right, so I just took the rest of that puppy paint bottle and did more webbing on the mask. Yeah, a voiceover is not really necessary here, but make sure you pay close attention to the picture that you're copying because uh, the web kind of wraps interestingly around his head there. And uh, unless you've done this three times, <laughs> it's hard to remember, but uh, yeah. Oh, sorry my camera is having such a weird time focusing in this clip. Uh, has a problem, I guess. I'm just noticing now, so, sorry. Mm -hmm. 
All right, here I am once more back in the completed costume here. Well, just kidding. This is actually like the same clip as the other thing. It's just editing and stuff, you know, but nonetheless, here is my mask all finished up and looking very nice. And now if I take this, even with my gloves, I can still hopefully put it on too well. There we go. Gonna have to tuck it into the collar of this thing here. Can do that later. This, But as a test fit itself, this is looking very nice. And it completes the costume. The whole thing is looking pretty cool. I don't, you don't see my legs right now, but you will later. And now you're done. Unless you want to do one more thing. That last thing is something very unique to Spider-Verse and the Miles character in it. When he makes his costume, he doesn't just, you know, full outright wear the costume itself. He puts some regular street clothes over it, which I think is really cool. And so, I'll show you here how to just get some of the street clothes to kind of match that same style. So, here we go. Some Miles clothes. First of all, he's got a red hoodie. Maybe you have a red hoodie. Maybe you don't. You maybe find it at a thrift store or at a, your friend's house, this closet you could borrow something. I don't know. <laughs> uh, just make sure it's a zip up and it doesn't have any logos or anything over top of it. You know, looks very nice. And of course, it's got a hood. Very important to Miles' character. And then over top of the hoodie, he also has a jacket. It's kind of a dark greenish color. In some lighting, it looks a little bluer, but this is what I found. I got this at a thrift store for like 10 or 12 bucks or something. Now, I know it is a little bit big and well, kind of smells like my grandpa, but it was like 10 bucks, okay? It's gonna work just fine. And there you go. If you wanna cosplay, you know, in the winter, like I'm doing, this is a great option. <laughs> you just throw these clothes over top, uh, and if it gets hot, you can always take it off, you know what I'm saying? And then the last thing Miles wears is probably the most iconic piece from the Spider-Verse costume. Everyone's been loving it. He wears some Jordans. Based on the red sole there, you can actually tell they're Chicago ones. I just googled that. I'm not a shoe guy. But you can look online for these somewhere. I was trying to find some type of Nike high tops. Obviously, I'm not going to buy some Jordans just for this costume. This is, this is DIY, okay? Unless you've got that, that cash lying around or you happen to have them on your own, good for you. <laughs> but let me take you back a few weeks ago when I was looking for these shoes and uh, you'll see. Hey guys, so I'm currently looking online here for some type of cheap Nike high tops, preferably in the same style of Miles' Jordans, just so that I can maybe repaint them and get them as close as possible uh, to his shoes here, but I'll keep you updated. Okay, I swear, I did not plant this. I happened to come across on the internet, some seller, some used shoes here, those are pretty darn close. I might have to buy them there. I mean, they're that similar and for that price? Man. All right, nice. Here they are now, and they're looking pretty good. Now, I know they're not the exact replicas. I'll pop up a comparison picture for you guys. You can see they're actually kind of the reverse, like opposite color scheme there, but that's okay with me. I mean, I'm not gonna be super picky. These are just the shoes of your costume. Uh, if you don't wanna wear them, that's just fine. But I have no need to, you know, repaint them to make them the exact way. It's fine with me. However, if you wanna repaint your shoes or you're not as lucky to find these exact versions, I'll link a tutorial video here that'll show you how to paint over any Nike high tops that are in a similar style to kind of make them look exactly like Miles's Jordans. Yeah, but for me, these are just fine. I'm gonna leave them as is in my costume, and uh, yeah. I'm not a shoe guy, okay? I'm so white I had to Google what Jordans were, so yeah. Okay, I lied. I did end up swapping the laces over from white to black, but then this costume is complete.
Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I want to give a quick shout out here to the Lincoln Street Art Park. They had all this amazing graffiti there, which made for one pretty cool montage you just saw. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and share it with your friends. If you have any questions on this build, as well as your requests for future costumes or props, make sure to leave them in the comments section down below. Until next time, I'm Dave, aka The Costume Kid, and thanks for watching.